इंट्रोड्यूसिंग आनंदिता We'd heard that this mystery singer could charm the gods from the heavens with her angelic voice. Amazingly, in this digital age, there were no videos or audio clips, none. The producer of the show had her on a stringent radio silence. I could understand that. But what about her life before that? How was that even possible? The musicians came on stage to vigorous applause. settled down to tune their instruments and imperceptibly segued into the performance the central platform for the lead singer remained empty the initial piece was only instrumental and the applause was tepid they started the second piece a well loved bhajan and the audience clapped along she started singing from the wings even before she came on stage so we heard her before we saw her we lived in a joint family in a big house across the river one night my father came home very late fairly normal for him but unusually ushering before him a bedraggled waif scrawny drenched and silent it had been raining falling in dense sheets in the impenetrable blackness He was almost home he told us traversing the last bit over the bridge and looked up just for a moment from a brief he was reading in the car and fleetingly saw something not sure what but enough for him to request the driver to reverse a tense maneuver in that downpour that something turned out to be this girl at the railing looking down into the turbulent water My father is a pretty forceful character as many in the courthouse will stand witness. She was soon in the car and on her way to our home. She was dispatched for a bath, a change into dry clothing and a hot meal. During all this, she said not a word. Occasionally, a tear slid down her cheek and was brushed away brusquely. Father's instructions were that she was not to be interrogated just fed and provided for and watched that she not try to endanger herself again she'd speak when she was ready but she didn't speak she could evidently hear because she responded but either could not or would not speak just so you know ours is a legal family and my father is the second son His elder brother became head of the family after their father a judge in the high court passed away. Our grandmother had gone pretty much into retirement in widowhood and my aunt ran the household. I hate to put it so plainly but she has a cantankerous nature and the household functions smoothly only because my mother is so adjusting. In the big house as we always call it Our family had a beautiful ritual of community worship. Every evening at dusk, whoever was present would gather for a small puja. We took turns leading, even the staff and guests, and would sing a few bhajans together. Someone played the harmonium, someone the cymbals. It was melodious. For most of us had received or were undergoing musical training. Someone noticed that the girl never had to be summoned to the puja she came of her own accord and stood in deep concentration this was the sole thing she did voluntarily immediately and with great hope she was given puja responsibilities but she performed them desultorily it was only when the bhajan started that she perked up though she didn't join in We watched her compulsively. She didn't seem to mind or even to notice. This obsessive focus on the girl, as everyone called her, started to irk my aunt, who 
snapped every time she was mentioned. No one wanted to rouse aunt's wrath, which could last for weeks and everyone would suffer. So the household sizzled with tension. The girl herself remained non-reactive. Father insisted she be given more time. One Sunday morning, exactly like every other, we were at puja when a new voice was heard. The bhajan was an old favourite, Achyutam Keshavam, which has a repetitive melody and an easy rhythm. The voice was slightly shaky, wobbly and uncertain, as if unused to singing. So sweet, so drenched in honey, that everybody fell to silence. Yes, indeed, as you've guessed, it was the girl. Her spell-binding voice brought Meera, Jasoda and Shabari right into the room with us. And the golden sound rolled around and enveloped us like liquid magic. She sang the concluding bars, covered her mouth and collapsed on the floor in a soft, crushed bundle, crying bitterly into her knees. We completed the puja and diplomatically dispersed as father invited mother and her into his chamber. They emerged some time later with the story. She had a stammer. An atrociously bad one. She couldn't say a single word. No matter how hard she tried, the words flung themselves against her teeth and lips and refused to go through. She'd been humiliated and ridiculed her whole life and silence had been her only recourse. But even that had not protected her. The day father found her on the bridge had been a nadir of despair. All this was communicated in writing, which she'd never offered to do before. The bhajan had clearly unlocked something within her, so it's no wonder that it became her favourite. And one more thunderous, earth-shattering, monumental, unbelievable fact. She'd not known she could sing. She simply couldn't understand what had arrested the stammer in song. It had been such a shock to her and so awe-inspiring that she just put her heart into that bhajan. That words could slip unchallenged across her lips had been like heaven to her. She had no realization that she could sing like an apsara. It seemed such a travesty that her mesmeric singing voice was so spectacularly hobbled in ordinary speech. I remember bursting into tears when mother explained. In the days after that, her nature changed completely. She carried a small notebook with her and used it to communicate freely. She ran to do things, never waiting to be asked. And of course, she led the singing in the daily puja. We all sang softly so we could enjoy her enchanting voice. Each one felt transported into their own personal vision of heaven. She exulted in her singing. Not in her voice, you understand. She was oblivious of the matchless quality of her instrument. She just rejoiced that she could sing at all without stammering. It was a release from a bondage of silence and shame. She still refused to tell us her name or any more of her past history. So father named her Anandi, bestower of pleasure. But not everyone was pleased. Aunt abruptly accosted father one day at dinner, revealing her agitation since mealtime harmony was sacrosanct. What was to be done with the girl? Was she to remain in the house forever? Was she to be treated as a daughter of the family? Was a bridegroom to be found for her? And who would marry a girl of such a mercurial temperament? Silent and uncommunicative one moment and singing unrestrained the next. He had thoughtlessly brought her into the house and now he had to make a decision. Father smoothed it over as best he could and everyone hoped Anandi hadn't heard Aunt's strident and ugly remarks for we'd all become very fond of her. This was on a Saturday night. The next morning, at the Sunday puja, she sang Aisi Lagi Lagan so soulfully 
it would have melted a heart of stone we heard the words and knew they had fresh meaning and subtle weight and felt personal she had indeed been taunted and she'd been stopped but now she sank not any more by the time her absence was noted on monday it was midday the watchman indicated she'd gone off in that direction pointing towards the bridge father was informed by a phone call but received the news much later because he was in court they tried to keep it from us kids but we knew father and uncle used their police contacts they searched everywhere even despairingly down river from us it was much worse than i can express we tried to convince each other that she'd return to her home she must have a home somewhere everyone did but privately none of us believed it we all knew in our bones that aunt's vicious words had driven her over the edge to complete the task father had interrupted her at aunt was the focus of a lot of anger even hatred and she herself felt terribly guilty nobody in our family has ever sung achutam keshavam again that was her song so to hear that instantly remembered voice pouring out of the wings singing the divine words achutam keshavam krishna damodaram was like experiencing a heart attack i mean it my heart just stopped father almost bounded out of his seat and mother was crying into the anchal of her sari somehow we sat through the performance and the three encores they forced her to sing with their incessant and adoring applause we joined the queue to meet the artist and chinese whispers crept up the line she's not speaking she can't speak her voice needs a rest it must be tired after the performance i noticed she had a notebook and pen in hand the line moved painfully slowly there must have been 50 people ahead of us i was up on my toes peering down the line when she looked up to see how many more fans she must appease and our gazes locked and then nothing she put her head down and attended to the next person i'd been too young when she knew me she didn't recognize the adult but mid stroke of her pen she froze and looked up again seeking she couldn't possibly have seen mother but she couldn't possibly miss father a head taller than all the rest the notebook and pen fell from her nerveless hands bouncing loudly on the wooden stage she pushed everyone aside and ran barefoot from her stage performance up the queue and before anyone could react she thrown herself full length in the aisle with her trembling fingers on father's leather shod feet and her face in the dust it was a tableau silent and motionless not even the angels were breathing father bent down and picked her up and held her to his chest and she drenched his shirt with her tears the madly inquisitive crowd had to be bundled out we were corralled into a private area mother hugged her and they wept over each other i stood idly around she had no attention to spare for me yet my eye fell casually on one of the promotional posters lining the walls and i almost smacked my forehead how could i not have put two and two together it should have struck some chord it said there quite plainly in big bold letters introducing anandita 